What's up, y'all? It is TTC, aka the Thunder Conductor, and we are back for another YouTube video and Twitch stream. If you're on YouTube, make sure you like, subscribe, and ring the bell. And if you're on Twitch, make sure you're following and ring the bell. We do this one time a week on Twitch and twice a week on YouTube. Stay tuned because we have something really juicy for today's video. But before we get into it, I have a question for y'all. What recent tournament win winner has really surprised you the most? Like, we have... You know, we we recently had Najila got his got his win on uh, Twin Flame and all these crazy decks. But the deck that surprised me, honestly, was Tameshi. This commander is crazy, and I actually had to take the time to get to know this commander better. So I want to take a second and introduce somebody to you all, Mr. DJ Yavi Maya, one of the greatest Tameshi pilots on the planet. Talk to us, brother. Hey, how's it going? Man, living my best life. Living my best life. Talk to us, Here. brother. Who are you? What got you into Tameshi? Give us the spiel, brother. Yeah, so I, I've been playing CDH for coming up on, on I guess, nine years now, give or take. Uh, okay. I started off with uh, Sadisi Brew Tyrant Food Chain uh, way back uh, in, like, 2015. Um, always, always loved graveyard stuff. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I got a casual Borborygmos deck that you know, it's just hidden commander life from the loam, basically. Mm. Um, <laughs> Can I go wrong with that, brother? That, that's dreads, correct? Yeah, yeah. Sheesh, that's not no joke, brother. <laughs> yeah, uh, I I played Legacy in the past, and uh, my my main was Infect, but I dabbled with Manal both Ma both Manalus and regular Dredge um, okay. as kind of like backups uh, when I wanted to mix things up. So. Like I've that. liked playing with the graveyard for a while in Magic. <laughs> I feel that, and I'm guessing that le led you to this beautiful commander named Tameshi. Like we got a little graveyard shenanigans going on here. Tell me about that. Yeah, so I love the the, the ability to kind of like recur value out of the graveyard repeatedly. Mm. Really appeals to me, and then the the fact that it's not really super obvious how to break the commander uh, just by looking at it. <laughs> yeah, that... and it presents both a deck building puzzle that I really enjoy and also a gameplay puzzle where it's the play patterns, you know, change a lot throughout the course of a game um, based on how things are going, what you're looking at in your hand. Like you can, it can really shift uh, from like one, one direction to the other uh, quickly based on how things develop. So the, exactly. That's real. The, the yeah. complexity of, of the deck is, is enjoyable. Mm, I love that. So it sounds like for the audience, if they if you are a lover of complex decks, but skill based decks that reward you for being a skilled pilot, this definitely sounds like this will be the deck for you. Am I right, brother? I 100% I agree. OK, well, looking at this command, this uh, commander, it's named Tameshi Reality Architect. It costs two and a blue to cast Moon Folk, not Merfolk, but Moon Folk Wizard. OK, spicy, spicy. It is a 2-3 that says, whenever one or more non-creature permanents are returned to hand, draw a card. This ability triggers only once each turn, and you can pay X and a white, return a land you control to its owner's hand, return target artifact or enchantment card with mana value X or less from your graveyard to the battlefield, and activate only as a sorcery. Never hate, love to see that, but it's been working for you, so... Tell me, when you read this card, what do you see? Yeah, so the, the two restrictions are obviously uh, unfortunate. Uh, people have people have brought in brought up in games like, oh my god, imagine if that was in, you could do instant speed with that yeah. activated ability. You know, just sit there looking at your your various utility spells in graveyard and just rebuy the one that you need exactly, in the moment. Exactly. Like that would be great, and then. Uh, you know that once each turn clause that Watsy likes to throw on cards now <laughs> is a uh, is a buzzkill, but yeah, it's still you know it's it's still both abilities are still pretty strong. Um, mm -hmm. When when I when you look at really the activated ability is is the bigger selling point okay. uh, of it. The the draw is helpful for winning the game. Um, and, I'm sure we'll we'll discuss that more. Okay. Um, but the the activated ability, uh, being able to rebuy stuff, um, without actually having to spend spells to do it, 
um, is is a pretty powerful thing, I think. Uh, you get to, especially now, you get to circumvent, you know, counter spells. But if you're cheating uh, stuff into play, true, true, stuff, true. Even if stuff does get countered, you can rebuy it. Mm -hmm. You know, the the look on opponents' faces, they counter your Ristic study. You're like, <laughs> all right, I'm just gonna pay four more mana and get it back <laughs> or uh, a smothering tithe as well yeah Jeez, and i've also bro. drawn a card in the process of just rebuying it because i bounced the land like <laughs> i love this brother okay so i got one more question before you before we get deep into it right now the top white and blue commander is i'm pretty sure it's a mixture between well at least most the most popular per se would be somewhere between a heliod and like a shorakai so why should people choose to meshi over these flash speed enablers and like artifact untap untap tap shenanigans talk to me brother yeah um i think i think all three have a ton of merit in the azorius space um you know Heli heliod's ability to play at flash speed uh can't be understated enough i 100%. think especially right now like you see so many decks playing born upon a win yep uh, and like you just have you know albeit expensive born upon a win the command zone but the the ability to just if you flip Pelion, you just you just get to sit there for the rest of the game like as this imminent threat if the table draws too many cards you know exactly somebody somebody feeds a Ristic and like whoops the game's over uh, exactly because we don't draw cards in cdh right we just try to no. chill back you know what i'm saying we're impulse yeah. drawing that's what we're doing yeah unbanned <laughs> leovold exactly okay but with that um, sure, said, go ahead, brother. Go ahead, go ahead, brother. Shortcuts, shortcuts, dope too. Um, I guess for for me personally, maybe uh, it's a powerful effect, but maybe too linear or vanilla uh, mm. for my taste. You know, tap draw cards is strong, uh, no doubt. Um, but I like the for me with Tameshi the sort of non-linear ways to way like non-linear and unclear play patterns mm. play patterns of it uh that and generating value in not necessarily a straightforward just draw cards um way uh i think is is the big selling point on the deck is you can you get to do stuff that not a lot of other commanders can do you know a lot of a lot of commanders can draw cards um sure right. pretty good at it but it's certainly not the it's you not unique in that space exactly um and one of my my fellow tameshi pilot naistrom who was the, actually the winner of that time vault time twister mm -hmm. um event has likened tameshi to uh, a, a pseudo underworld breach in the command zone <laughs> in terms of its ability to mm. uh replay things and tumble off with that and I think that's what we all we need be we we've been waiting to hear at this point because honestly, bro, red is right now dockside extortion is an underworld breach, and if you're telling me one of the most powerful win cons in all of CDH is in your command zone, that's all I need to hear. But before we get into the fully, I want to hear about your turn of resource. I want to tell the audience, if you're looking for more ways to support the channel, because I really am looking forward to this deck tech, please, we have two main ways to do so. Number one is we have our Patreon. It allows you to do amazing things like have your deck possibly featured on this channel, just like DJ y Yavi Maya. Not to mention, you also get the opportunity to get a deeper dive in our Discord. And also, you get shouts on the disc, get on shouts on our YouTube and our Twitch. And if you're not really feeling the discord or all the extra features that come with the patreon you just want to say one time for the fun time ttc i love what you do and i want to support you bro go ahead and buy me a coffee it keeps me up it keeps the lights on but with that said brother talk to me about your tournament results man because recently if i remember correctly you recently had a top four appearance uh, alongside comedian mtg and a lot of other notable what's up dre uh, we have a lot of uh, alongside a lot of another notable uh cdh players in our like sphere man yeah yeah so uh last weekend i uh went to a 58 man uh event at king's court in uh, taunton massachusetts great great store um mm -hmm. the own the owner is a great guy he's been um like really ramping up his uh cdh scene gotcha. in the last couple months so he's he's hosting monthly tournaments now full full proxy um every Ugh. other one is is a 2k um event um 
so you know re really good payout um, good. and there's there's a, a ton of people in the area that are that are interested in it so um can't can't say enough about the the space and the owner um yes but yeah so i went obviously uh paddling to meshi uh we had comedian there sick robot um and sick robot and spleen face uh both came down from uh from their toronto uh and neighborhood to uh yeah, yeah, yeah. join since they since they know some of the people in the uh boston area yeah. um so i ended up yeah like you said i made finals i went uh two two and one in okay. the swiss mm -hmm. um I guess my, my first round, uh, I had uh, an Urza, a Rowan, that's the uh, red black one. Mm -hmm. from, uh, yep, tap it and everything gets a discount. Yeah, yeah. that was that was a cool deck to see in action. Yeah, um, they kind of fizzled it. out and the, and it was it was Urza, Rowan, myself, and Kinnan in that pod. So kind of tough for Rowan. Yeah, um, yeah. But that was that was a crazy game i got to see trouble in pairs in action <sighs> for myself first time i've resolved the card and uh, great card man between kinnon having their own ristic study urza had a one ring <sighs> and they went for a comp and they went they went for the win um i think trouble in pairs drew me like 10 cards in like a turn and a half i was like yeah oh my this card's, gosh. this card's pretty good right now <laughs> I hear that. I hear that. Okay. So I, I ended up I ended up getting there in that game. Urza got stopped and okay. uh, it, it cleared the way. I slammed down the Ranger Captain, and oh. crack it, and say nice Ristic study. But uh, <laughs> we're gonna take we're gonna take this one here. <laughs> okay. So we got game one win to Meshi for the win. How was game two? So game two, uh, game two was one where I was one I was one force of will away from getting there. Oh. Um, there was an Elevere that was, they were they were getting there, locking down the game. Yeah, the, Elevere's a monster, man. I had I popped their. Uh, they played the um, Shalar. Is it Shalai? Shalai, the um, thing that gives all their yep uh, uh, stuff hexproof. Yep, uh, Shalai, Voice of Plenty, I believe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. yeah. Uh, so going right into my turn, I killed a Shalai. I killed a Notion Thief from the uh, seat. Uh, to Grixis Malcolm. And I went to my turn. The only thing in my way at this point is Blind Obedience. Because um, mm. I wanted to go for my Copy Artifact combo line, and it unfortunately does not work through the Blind Obedience mm. um, unless I have very specifically one card in play, which I didn't have. Understood. Um, I had Artificer's Intuition uh, in play, which is like survival of the fittest for cheap artifacts uh, uh, i've seen this before people have actually had talked about trying to run this in marty marnie's decks okay keep talking yeah, brother th this card's this card's sick and tameshi uh you know lotus bloom is one of the best cards in the deck uh mm. and it it alone it tutors for lotus bloom um and can find all sorts of utility pieces and combo pieces mm. um so in this instance i was using it to find uh I used it to find uh, a portable hole, ah. and I was gonna. I needed. I needed the portable hole to stick, and if it did, I would have been able to get there. Um, got you. Got and, you. Got but you. I, I into an Elevere that you know, it's Elevere is not gonna be able to stop a portable hole more often. Right, than right, not. right, right, right. Uh, Grixis Malcolm was tapped out, and seat four was a Git rug. I was mm. like, we're going for this, uh, you know. And uh, unfortunately, Grixis Malcolm had the Force of Will. And Aww. if I had one, more, if I had one more land in play, I could have just rebought the Portable Hole, um, to to just get get the Blind Obedience, anyways. Um, right, right, right. But I was unfortunately stuck between needing needing a certain amount of lands in play to execute my to kickstart the combo, hmm. and needing to rebuy the Portable Hole. So I unfortunately I got, got stuck. Um, Grixis Malcolm ended up getting there with a cheeky little Oracle console. As oh, was. We hate to see it. Okay. Yeah. So now we are 1-1, one, one, but we have hope. So talk to me about game three. Uh, game three was 
probably one of the easiest games of CDH I ever played. Uh, <laughs> Wait, what? I turn one, my first seven, I open it up. I got land, mana crypt, soul ring, rhystic study. I'm like, okay. <laughs> Snap key. Is, I don't care what else yeah, is in it, hand. I'm it keeping does, it. It doesn't even, yeah. I don't, I don't remember what else was in hand either. It didn't really matter. I think okay. there was a Tesseret in hand. Like, <laughs> and a tutor. Yeah, yeah, we're done. Yeah. Conversation's over. We're so, done. We're done. I, I slammed that down. Needless to say, the Rhystic study drew me a bunch of cards. I drew mm. my Hullbreaker Horror. Oh. Uh, I drew my Grand Abolisher. Grand Abolisher, Hullbreaker. You know. Game over. Show, show him the loop. Uh, I'll let it with Tameshi. Game over. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, I cannot wait till we get into these win cons then at this point. All right, so now we're 2-1. We're into game three at no game four at this point yeah keep talking we had two one baby come on yeah so this one i i think in look hindsight's 2020 i think i could have got there uh, um i got a little i got a little i missequenced and got a little greedy mm. on turn two i was in seat four gotcha you got, um dargo thras um i think this i think it was another Grix malcolm mm. uh yeah, I think it was another Drixus Malcolm here. I could be mistaken. Ver mm -hmm. Blue black at the very least. Right, um, right, right. And then the last one, or T3 was Sick Robot on uh, his version of the Clam Chowder Sisse build. Oh, yes, um, I've heard stories, heard stories, heard stories. Um, So I'm in seat four here, and... I go to play, I, I get out my Tameshi, I get out uh, on, you know, a Mana Crypt, Tameshi, uh, Land Hand, I have the LED, uh, I have an E-Tutor, so it's like, this looks like it can be something for me, and if I had, sim if I had just waited until my turn three, coming into my turn three to pop the E-Tutor, mm. I think... I think I would have been able to get there. I missed, I missed my sequence to go for the win on turn two, because um, ah. I ta I played a I used a blue mana too early. Um, Got and it you. Prevented me. I would have got stopped by a mind break trap that I found out about later. Hmm. Uh, because sick robot was able to uh, politic the letting their neoform resolve instead of it getting mind breaked. Damn. Um, I'm sorry, brother. Damn. Yeah. So I ended up I ended up getting Tameshi Gilded Drake and you know yeah, we, yeah, we didn't yeah. get there in the end. But no, if yeah. I if I hadn't revealed that I had tutored copy artifact with the E tutor, I think I don't represent a threat. That Neoform probably just gets mind breaked right there. No hundred percent. Uh and then, you know, I think maybe I'm off to the races. But you know, it nope. happens. Exactly. And especially with those politic, those losing to politic games, those are the, the biggest ones to reflect on. Like the top of foreign players are great players, but they're also great politickers. And they, they get yeah. the top mm -hmm. regularly for a reason. Yeah, both sick, robot, sick robots, no exception. Exactly. And we just lost your visuals, brother. Could you uh, double check that real quick for us? You still in there? Uh, can you see me? Let's see. Yes, we got you back. We got him back, guys. We got him back. Good, good, good. That was weird. I, lost, I actually lost you on my end. That was weird. Okay, okay, good. I'm glad we have you back. All right, cool. All right. So um, we and yeah, lost. yeah, Sick Robots, you know, absolutely uh, one of the great silver tongues, I would say. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I kid you not. I, I tell people about this uh, experience I had all the time. My first time going top 16 with Model Red Reunion and, like, you, the first time you go top 16, it's like this nervous. It's like, I made this far. I don't want to fuck up. So you you may not mulligan as aggressively. You may like be more quiet because you don't want to over politic or you may over talk or whatever the fuck may happen. The nerves start to get to you and just you're in that moment where it's just like you just have this good who dude is just chilling and just talking the table to the, like to a yeah. win. Just talking. it. You know what I'm saying? And just for me, it was like that humbling moment of like, OK, I've proven I'm a great player, but I need to up my politic and skills you know what i'm is saying that next there's that next level oh one billion percent yeah. one billion percent because when i ended up following that up with the top four of marnius after only playing the deck for 14 days it was my politic that got me there because my i still was still learning the deck i was as i was playing it in mox masters it was yeah. <laughs> i'm just i'm gonna tell them myself but no nah, yeah but 
We're game five now. We we're two and two. We're pretty sure yes, we're making we top it. sixteen. So we're I'm right on the cusp here. I'm winning in for uh the tournament actually did a uh we did a cut to ten. Oh, for yes. this tournament. Right, so right. top two, uh straight to finals. Okay. Uh of course this was Sick Robot and Comedian, where we're top two. Mm-hmm. Um because what who else would it be? Um <laughs> Um, so I'm definitely winning in. I have 10 points here, you know, 15 for sure puts me in. Um, I wasn't sure looking at the math. I wasn't sure if 11 could get me in if I, if I drew, Mm. um, my opponents though, were all strictly winning in. They had, you know, six points, six points and seven points. So like Mm. they had absolutely, they need to play this game. Um, I wasn't even I wasn't sure if a draw got me in. So, you know, I was I was I was there to play magic anyways. Right, exactly, um, exactly. Let's play, cool. guys. Let's have some fun. So it's uh Tevish Krom, Elsha, myself, and Tivit is the pod. Hmm. Um and I got I got stuck on two lands. Um and I think I have a lotus spell. I, I, I was I was low on mana this game. It was mm. it was super rough. And at a certain point, uh, I just kind of realized like I can't win this game. Like this, other decks are just in a position where even if I can dig myself out of the hole I'm in, like I, it's too much work. I'm not going to be able to actually pull off a win. Right. So I'm playing for the draw here. I'm going to make decisions that that move me move this game. Uh, to 80 minutes long. Exactly. I hear that. Um, I hear so that. So, yeah. I'm protecting my Dranith Magistrate, uh, you know, my blind obedience um, is stopping Elsha from winning, is stopping T- it Actually, towards the end of the game, was stopping Tivit from winning because their time seed was going to enter tapped and they couldn't, uh, mm. for the life of them, remove the blind obedience which is funny because Tivit was actually helping me protect the blind obedience earlier in the game <laughs> with their with their spell skite i think elsha right. tried to re- i think elsha tried to remove this the blind obedience two or three times um oh. and Tivit uh was using spell skite to keep it in play because they couldn't win yet mm. so they were like well we can't let elsha win they have elsha and they have top we can't let blind obedience go Got you, got you, got you. That makes sense. That makes sense. Yeah. But in in the end, it was the blind obedience that stopped Tivit from winning too, because uh, mm. they would have had to expose their time sieve uh, to a, a round of of the table. Okay. So I was able to. We were ultimately able to to get that game to a draw, and I ended up making um, all the people with eleven points made did make top cut, uh, top That's ten. Like so the year. okay, good. So good, we good. got in. We got in. We got there. We got there. Okay, so yeah, at bought, this point, bought our, bought our ticket. <laughs> we got our ticket money back. All right. Yeah. So at this yep. point, we've had a long day, but we going for gold. So we're in yep. a top sixteen game. Talk to me. Yeah. So another another cool. last seat. So I was in I was in third third or fourth a lot of the day. Um, All right. But uh, again, we got an attract. I think we got an attraxa. Um, maybe an. Amanato. Okay, uh, Amanato, okay. Yeah. yeah. Um and then um uh, uh, a local guy that I know that plays uh it's an Ikrakram, like mid rangey, you know, pile of reanimator and good magic cards nonsense. Okay. Um it's sweet it's a sweet like homebrew deck, does really well. Um so I'm in seat four here. I think I end up mulling down to a five and I'm like, cause I'm like, oh man, these hands don't do anything, <laughs> especially not in seat four. Finally find uh, you know, Mana Vault, Mana Vault, Hullbreaker, uh, Smothering Tithe. And oh. I'm like, you know, we ride, let's see if it gets there. <laughs> <laughs> not, I don't think I can find a four that's better than this. Right, 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 right. We just ride that out, see what the fuck yeah. happens. And so, you know, I I stuck the smothering tithe. The you know, as as people do in CDH, they don't pay for smothering tithe. Dude. Uh, I get the hull breaker down. I think it sits there for like two turns because I literally don't have cards in hand. <laughs> Everybody's <laughs> looking like he's not a threat. Ah, Manavault's the only th- Manavault is the only artifact I have at this point in the game that isn't right. treasures. 
So I'm just sitting there like, come on, you know, doing my best politicking now where, come on, I don't, I'm not a threat. I don't, I, yeah, I got the Hellbreaker, but I don't have any cards in hand, right? I can't do anything. I'll just cast my commander on my next turn. What are we going to do? Exactly, exactly. And this, this was enough to, uh, somebody activated a wish, the uh, Aminatu activated a wish claw at some point, And, you know, I'm like, hey. I'm not gonna try to win right now, you know. <laughs> no, Atraxas, I need Atraxas. To use the wish claw, no. <laughs> but it was, you know, I kept that wish. That wish claw sat in, in my control for two or three turn cycles. I no no, because uh, no, I was good, I was I was honest. Dang. Like I'm not trying. To, I'm not trying to win this game anytime soon. Atraxa has got a risk study and a full grip. That's true. You know, there's. A one, the Ikrakram's got a one ring on like three or a Douthy Voidwalker. Like, yeah. come on, I'm, I'm definitely the person you give the wish claw to here. Please, I would have not I'm, even cracked that bitch <laughs> until I was ready to win. I, hey man, I know I he kicked remember. himself. About, I know he kicked himself about that one later, man. Dang. I mean, I was, I was definitely the right choice if they were gonna use it. I just don't remember. Yeah. I think they, I think they used it to find a win con. Uh, and they ultimately they ultimately got stopped on like, I the hear following you. Okay. turn. Okay, that makes sense. Then. That makes um, sense then. Yeah, 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 never mind. Then. So the the wish, I mean, the wish claw made sense. Uh, it's okay. just a, they ended up getting stopped. Uh, table tables interaction was spent, and it's like, all right, here goes nothing. Tutor up for that artifact to lose, <laughs> and uh, we got there. Oh, good, good. GG. All right, that sounds good. We just. Got our way after fighting and fighting, mulligan down to four, and now we're in the top four. So talk yeah, to me. Top, top four is <laughs> the the least exciting game of the day. I'm in fourth <laughs> seat yet again. Uh, sick robots in first. Just a innocuous land pass. Yeah. On a on a seven. I'm like okay. Okay. You know, it, in comedians got three mana and the uh the velociraptor with like dinosaur prowl yeah 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 which is like immediately terrifying right 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 lost you one more time brother and yeah we got you back brother all right all right cool um yeah just immediately terrifying three mana you know that that raptor probably can hit uh on the next turn uh right, right, rock right. side rock side you know plays land mana rock mana rock um whatever they had like three artifacts in play i go to my turn i kept a six that was just a bunch of artifact mana i didn't even have a land in play because i pitched it to mox time but i had i was like i don't think i could it's four mana turn one and i have a piece of interaction i don't know if i can mull that right 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 you know i just gotta see what can we draw um right. and then you know sick robot untaps <laughs> dock side wish claw no. chain of vapor the dock side chain of vapor the wish claw no my dispel means nothing in the face of a fluster storm and it's just you know, find the breach get there yeah man uh it really shows the the respect you have for your uh, opponents by choosing the hand that maybe didn't have as much action but had the interaction. But it sucks when that interaction that we're responsible to keep isn't enough to get us there. Yeah. And, and so, I mean, dispel is. Yeah. yeah, I mean, for me personally, I tell people I don't. I'm not a big fan of dispel, especially when people cast like a finale or some sorcery, and I'm looking at that one blue open and dispel in my hand like. Yeah, I've been. This don't get the job about... done. <laughs> I, I've been looking at this spell, you know, saying like, oh, could this be spell pierce? Could this be spell snare even? Um, I, I think all those those like niche uh, one mana counters that aren't fluster, mm. swan and, and offer. You, you can really go either anyway with that like fourth one, um, depending yeah. on what you're really most afraid of. So, yeah, that's something that I've been evaluating. I'm going to tell you this, and we can review this back when we get to our interaction package, because first I want to talk about win cons. But before we get into win cons, for me, I've actually been taking Dispel out of my list, and at least for my control stack list, stacks list, I have, have been putting in Trick Bind. 
because I, I have seen trick vines running around and I sh I use it in my top 16 game. Uh, it was like a TNK, a TNK and a, and a Dahada. You know what I'm saying? And so Dahada is going first as well. And by the time I got to grab uh, a stranglehold of the game, player two, the TNK player had a Dauntless Dismantler on board and I have like 20 plus treasures, but they're all mm. fucking tapped. And I left two mana up for the entire rotation when I passed and little did they know when he finally went to crack that, like after trying to overload a cyclonic rift, after trying everything to stop me, cause I just kept drawing cards cause they had Ristic right. Study Esper. It just ended with, all right, well, I'll use my last mana. I'll crack the Dauntless Dismantler. At least he won't win next turn. I was like, okay, that Sorry. ability is on the stack. I'd like to day two. I'd like to trick five that. <laughs> And it was the the entire like everybody on the stream and Mox Bass was going crazy. Everybody, all my homies was was messaging me like, "What the fuck?" This, is, it, this is the, uh, the the mirror shell crab metas coming. <laughs> that's the that's the channel channel two in a blue counter target artifact. Oh, uh, sorry, counter target spell ability unless its controller pays three. Mirror shell crab. No, Hold on, I've seen a... this before. Hold on. <laughs> yeah, it's a channel effect it's not you a know, cast it's actually actually i i kind of like this i ain't gonna cast counter target spell or, or ability unless it's controller phase three i actually think i'm running this in my uh tasker deck because it's a seven drop i can go into it has ward so if i need to keep a seven drop on board to be able to pot into an eight drop my, oh, true, yeah. And like in my tasker list, because there's like sometimes like I have birthing pod, I'll tap birthing pod to go get a seven drop to set up. But if I get mm. a too powerful seven drop, like a hole breaker whore or like a what is the seven drop that uh that does Nezahal? the slime counter? Not Nezahal, oh, but the Toxroll. Toxroll. Some of those are too powerful that they're gonna get yeah. removed. And so I put in what is the it is the the it's the thing that says it's that Sky Turtle, Colossus Sky Turtle. Sky Turtle. Sky I put in Colossus Sky Turtle because it has the ward and the flying, so it's still kind of powerful. And I love the channel ability, but I end up taking Trick Bind out for that. But I love Trick Bind, and I actually this is actually a great switch out for it because it is a Trick Bind that can't. It, it's a Stifle that can't be countered unless you have Trick Bind. Um, right. But it also allows me or to another Mirror Shell Crab or. <laughs> We are just gonna be like, and like how we have a fluster storm and vibrate trap. Like, no mirror still, mirror sh uh, shell crab. Oh, I mirror shell crab. You're mirror shell crab. Yep. Oh no, I mirror shell crab. <laughs> no, but actually, oh, this is goaded. Thank you. All I've, right. I've joked or I've joked around in the uh, the Tameshi section of the Azorius uh, server. Like, hey, this is this is the card we got to run because we can counter something with it and then pay eight mana to get it back. And now we have a come on big beater. Who doesn't have eight mana nowadays? Come on, I know, dude. Right? <laughs> dude, Let's I absolutely love this. Takes. Dude, I'm, I'm, oh yes, I am 100% adding this. I'm playtesting this in my uh, task list, 100%. <laughs> nice. But with that being said, you just helped me out. So let's help the audience out, bro. You've talked about, or let's just finish this off. Unfortunately, we didn't get the win. We were, we tap a, do you feel, uh, my only question before we get into win cons was that, do you feel like there was a universe where you maybe could have dug a little deeper for some more proactivity? Is, like, what was your biggest lesson you would say from this last tournament? Yeah, I think, I mean, in that finals game, I, I think my conclusion was, you know, I could have, I could have just gone, I could have looked at to see what the five was. Um, yeah. You know, knowing, knowing that, that that hand, even though I had mana, didn't have something immediate to do other than cast commander. Yeah. Um, you know, say... I gotta be a little more. I gotta risk it a little bit more, especially from seat four. Yeah, I hear what um, you're saying. I hear what you're saying. So, and that that sort of goes along with you know being a little more, a little more proactive, um, mm. which maybe doesn't necessarily mean looking for wins, uh, win or windows for wins, but also just knowing that I need to be more aggressive with my mulligans. Yeah. Um, in certain situations where it feels like, you know, if I don't have, if I don't have a really good open, does that, does, do I not even have a chance in this game? Mm, I hear what you're saying. Yeah. It's, it's especially tough in those top four games because we feel like, man, I have some interaction. I just want to get like, I've made it this far. Like maybe if I interact, I can just luck into something. And sometimes yeah. we have to remember, uh, 
sometimes you know our significant others or people say it's just a game and we take it as like this is like one of my favorite hobbies ever what are you talking about like this may yeah. be my bread and butter or whatever but a lot of times we have to open our mind to saying oh they're not downplaying magic together they're not downplaying my passion they're saying it's just a game it's just a singular game win or loss it doesn't define me as a person yeah. define me so and take that chance take that chance and say okay this is a six how do i i played this deck a lot i know how this deck goes i can aggressively mogul and down to a five go on seat one and two and still get something from that let's go see what a five looks like and maybe we get there you know yeah. and sometimes our parents just got it dock side chain of vapor on a wish claw and we can't yeah. do nothing turn, about it you know what i'm turn, saying turn but, two you know turn two on the play and the dock side makes seven what are you gonna do what you gonna do especially when you were responsible and you kept interaction but yeah. Please, like we hearing about this dockside win con. Let's talk about Tameshi's win cons. We know what the for commander sure. does, but let's run off some win cons, brother. Talk to me. For sure. Um, so the first one um, is, is sort of the the deck's bread and butter is uh, we call it copy artifact loop. Um, mm. So copy artifact, obviously one in a blue, uh, mm. enters the battlefield as a copy of any uh, artifact in play. Uh, mm -hmm. Card's gotten even better in the wake of one ring being printed because you know, yep. sometimes it's just a two mana one ring. Yep. Uh, <laughs> and that's that's pretty good when your your win con your combo pieces can sometimes just be value engines that are insane like that. Mm. Um, but copy artifact, the the thing that it's supposed to do is uh, act as sort of infinite land drops mm. uh, when combined with the artifact lands. So we have Ancient Den, Seed of Synod, and Treasure Vault. It can enter as a copy of those. And as long as you can keep producing mana, you have unbound Tameshi activations. Mm. Um, because really the thing that limits Tameshi from just going crazy with all sorts of things is the fact that you have do have to return lands to hand. And you don't have normally normally you don't have a way to keep putting them back into play copy artifact plus the artifact land does that for you hmm. so how so how does that work then so then copy artifact comes in as a copy of the artifact land itself or how does that line yep. work brother yep yep so you know for 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 example if i have ancient den in play okay a cast copy artifact it'll enter as a copy of ancient den so now it itself is a land that can okay. be returned with tameshi Oh. And then I can recast it. So essentially, I get one in a blue, make a land drop, uh, as a as a uh, re repeatable game action. Oh, got you. Okay, okay, okay. So then, at this point, we generate infinite mana at first. I'm guessing, and then we do this. So the actually, what you do is uh, for for this combo specifically, is you 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 use your third piece of lotus bloom or led got you got you got lotus bloom being the the more the or less broken black lotus black lotus or we also have uh our led which is you yep. know if you play breach you know what led is okay yeah all right talk so to those me. ones those generate those cost zero mm -hmm. so the the x is zero on tameshi to rebuy them gotcha um, ah. so they make three cost zero Copy artifact, uh, cost two to play and one to rebuy. And gotcha. it taps it itself taps for one before you bounce it. So you're God. gaining four mana and it only costs three to cast and return the copy artifact. What? Okay, okay. Very creative. I like that. I like that. So it is a three card combo, but we were in blue and in white. So we have a lot of artifact and enchantment tutors in our colors. Yeah, there's, okay. you know, a great redundancy. Already there's great redundancy on the artifact land. There's three of them in the deck. Exactly. They're super easy to find with all the tutors. Uh, LED and Lotus Bloom, same deal. Uh, yes. There's two of them. Super easy to find. Uh, copy artifact is, is, of the pieces, the hardest to find, and there's still three tutors for it. Uh, right. Four, really, if you want to count intuition. Um, <laughs> right, right, right. Just, just an absolutely insane card in Tameshi. Yeah. Okay, I'm feeling that. I'm feeling it. Okay, so we we have the copy artifact, the artifact lands, and our zero mana artifact uh, combo. So we have that. 
So talk to me. Give me another win con, brother. Um, so well, actually, that's infinite mana. Oh, uh, those three cards. That's infinite mana, uh, by itself. Gotcha. So then the the next step is to outlet it, which is more or less trivial in the deck, and that's by design. Um, mm. so there's there's several cards in the deck that uh, naturally outlet this. Mm -hmm. Um, and some of them, some of it is in non-obvious ways. Um, so super obvious blind obedience, uh, oh, outlets no. because you keep casting copy artifact over and over. So you just infinitely extort the table. Um, ether spell bomb, you can crack it over and over to draw a card. Ah. Uh, cause once you have the infinite mana, you just, instead of rebuying Lotus Bloom or LED say, okay, now I'm going to rebuy my ether spell bomb crack it to draw a card and do got the whole you. thing again and then you can you. kill with blind obedience once you draw it <laughs> got you so blind obedience um, is definitely part of being the goat okay soul god lantern is the same deal um and you see sort of a theme with some of these cards is like ether spell bomb soul god lantern even blind obedience like these are good cards on their own exactly um, exactly that have additional synergy with tameshi in combo situations and even outside, mm -hmm. I've you can keep people off of off of creature based combos with Ether Spell Bomb. You know, I've 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 kept a, a Malcolm deck at bay for turns on end because they can't beat an Ether Spell Bomb that I keep rebuying every turn. Mm, I hear that. I hear that. Uh, uh, Soul Guide Lantern is one mana. Uh, you know, exile all opponents' graveyards. Really good anti breach um, tech. Gotcha. Uh, so really good utility even when not comboing seal of removal outlets this as well uh it doesn't specifically say draw a card on it but what you do is you reset tameshi by bouncing it to hand and then replay tameshi with your infinite mana uh... the next time you activate tameshi you'll get a draw once again a card that's great by itself but synergizes with our commander allows to draw our draw our deck out fantastic yep. okay i like and this i like this okay Phyrexian metamorph actually Phyrexian metamorph actually does this too technically you rebuy it tameshi goes to the command zone replay tameshi let cop let the cloned tameshi go back to graveyard and activate tameshi again got like that. you got you got you okay that makes sense okay so just a lot of ways uh, to generate first infinite mana and then we have we're looking to make infinite mana and then follow that up with drawing our library and doing infinite casts with either blind obedience or uh, what, are, what are some other outlets we have? Uh, Hedron Crab works here because um, you actually are infinite landfall too with your copy <laughs> artifact entering. Ah, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. That makes sense. They got Okay, so at that point you mill your opponents and then are we playing wheels to draw them out or are we... Uh, Nope. Uh, we are on so you i would probably soul guide them first um because oh, he drunk gotcha. crab actually finds all my pieces too i can mill myself to whatever got you got um you. uh so you know mill them out soul guide them and then uh the other the fun alternative if i'm not gonna blind obedience because that's obviously the easiest thing mm -hmm. to do um is just find the blind obedience no questions asked infinitely extort exactly uh with Codex Shredder plus Savine's Wreck plus Cephalid Coliseum, I can force each of them to draw with empty libraries. Ah, so we have Codex Shredder, Savine's Reclamation, and then what third card? Cephalid Coliseum, the land. Oh, very simple at that point. Yeah, because so you, you force you, each... you don't Savine, you don't flashback the Savine's Wreck. You Codex Shredder it. Um, gotcha. So you can rebuy, and you can rebuy Codex Shredder as many times as you want. Um, right. Get back Savines, get back Coliseum, kill the first person, and then do that twice, that whole thing twice more. Hundred percent. That and that's like because one of the <laughs> a lot like we recently have had some new decks that do radiation counters and stuff. Oh yeah, they'll die, and I'm like, I've already, I'm sure everyone's already had a game where a person just wins with border upon the winner emergence yep. zone with the with the um, with the mill trigger on the stack so yeah. being able to yeah. end the game on your turn is very great and it's important so i love that you have that it's important line. for tournaments too exactly um, you don't want to be stuck in a situation like i didn't want to be stuck in a situation where i have my blind obedience exiled for whatever reason and you know we're coming up on 
80 minutes in the round, I don't want to be stuck saying, crap, I can't win this game because I have to pass the turn to each of my opponents. Uh, uh, so having having two having two like straight up hard hard ways to end the game on my turn uh, is really important. Got you. And so these are our two main outlets once we complete the create infinite mana, at least with the two infinite manas we've seen so far with the uh, three mana artifacts like the LED Lotus Bloom, our namesake of the copy artifact, as well as our artifact lands, which can be Ancient Den or good old uh, See the Side Knot or good old Treasure Bar. Shout out to Kenneth. Yep. So, okay. I like that. I like that. Yep. Okay. So keep talking to me. We've we actually we've brought up Holebreaker Horror a couple times. So if you don't mind jumping to this one, of course. Yeah. Um, yep. So Holebreaker, uh, you know, generate your infinite mana. You do need infinite blue uh, in this deck. Okay. Um, but if you if you get the infinite blue, um, Tameshi will trigger off the first one, the first iteration of or first targeting of Holebreaker Horror. Right. It bounce, you bounce something. Tameshi sees it and draws a card. Um, but that pesky once per turn clause gets in the way. Mm. So, uh, what you do is you actually insert Tameshi into that bounce loop. So it's like a three card. Gotcha. Uh, Hellbreaker's juggling two artifacts and Tameshi. Got you, got you, got you. So you'll, if it's three, if it's three things, you'll, if two were on the board, one in the hand, one bounces the artifact, the other artifact bounces the Tameshi, then the Tameshi bounces the artifact, and then so on and so forth, and you're infinitely yep. going all the all way around after you've already created the infinite colorless and blue. And I'm guessing you also probably need white. Do you need white mana to activate? No, not not for not for that, because you're never activating Tameshi in this situation. You're just replaying him and then bounce bounce one of the artifacts with the hole breaker replay that artifact bounce the other artifact oh and you know what this is hilarious whenever one or more non-creature permanents are returned to hand draw a card it doesn't say where yeah. so hole breaker horde triggers your own tameshi to draw correct exactly yep doesn't oh. care where the bounce source is okay. as long as the card gets bounced all right wizards of the coast y'all were thinking just a little bit y'all didn't leave these these folks straight okay <laughs> All right, so okay, we so we got a copy artifact line, we got a hole breaker line. Keep talking to us. What's some more win cons? Uh, so we got mind over matter actually pulls uh, double duty in oh. this list. Uh, it's the it's a a piece of two separate combos. Okay. Uh, so mind Bra mind over matter is uh, one of the few spells in Magic that has four four or more colored uh, of the same color pip. Um, oh two, yeah, two and four blue. <laughs> that uh, is not a joke. So you, dis you discard a card to untap or tap target artifact creature or land. Okay, makes sense. So, with Tameshi in play and any two of Ancient Den, Seed of the Synod, Treasure Vault, or Urza Saga, mm -hmm. any two of those lands and a white source in play somewhere. Gotcha. Uh, it doesn't need to be ancient den. Um, if it is ancient den, you can generate infinite white from this. If it's not, you'll generate uh, infinite uh, of whatever the colors of the lands that you have that you're looping. So mm. how it works, you'll let's say one of them is in play, okay. one of them's in hand. Okay. You can discard one to untap a mana source. Okay. Uh, return, float, float a mana with the one in play. Discard or activate Tameshi to return the one in play to hand and rebuy the one in grave. Oh shit! That's so fucking dope, dude. each time you dope, do this, dude. you're netting a mana. That's dope because it's a zero cost. So you'll float the mana, pay the uh, no, you'll you'll discard the land untap the land float the mana use use one of the extra floating mana at this point well no you'll float the mana discard it to untap it float another one so you have two mana floating now you'll use one of yep. those mana to activate tameshi to put that land onto the battlefield returning the new land returning the land that was on the battlefield to your hand and now you're back in the same position but now 
you need to you just you have the white source at the well no, no 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 the white source came from any land on the battlefield it doesn't matter or whatever white source it comes from yeah but at this point yep. you're back in the reset position where now you have an artifact land in your hand artifact land untapped on the battlefield now you can repeat this process netting all the colors you need predominantly though blue and colorless i'm guessing at this point at least yeah so the so um let's see, if you're looping if you're looping Treasure Vault and Urza Saga, it'll generate infinite colorless because mm. uh, you need to uh, the card, the one that you discard, you need to be untapping a white source each time. Gotcha. Um, each time you activate Mind Over Matter, you'll need to untap the white source to make sure that you can keep paying for Tameshi. Understood. Um, Understood. Now, if you if it's Treasure Vault, of course, if you have infinite colorless, you will have infinite treasures afterwards. True. Um, true. True. Which is a, a nice little bonus uh, for playing Treasure Vault, besides the fact that it, it can be a sort of awful Tameshi uh, grind piece right. sometimes as well. Uh, if you really need to draw cards and yeah. have no other things to return. Right. Um, if you have see the Synod and Urza Saga, you'll have infinite blue and infinite colors, and Ancient Den will give you uh, Ancient Den will give you infinite of infinite activations of anything you have in play that needs to tap mm. so ancient and is ancient and treasure vault are the two best to have access to for doing this because it gives you that infinite activations of uh um in, infinite activations of anything that can tap that you have so then you can um, if you if urza saga is on two at this point if you do it while urza saga is on two you virtually can make infinite uh constructs you can make infinite infinite constructs yep um wow. the other one is codex shredder you can infinitely mill got you got you infinitely mill your opponents and we've already talked about how to force draw using savine's codex shredder and the cephalic coliseum okay i like yep. that that's hard um, bro and also, it's it's again infinite landfall uh so oh. you can you can hedron crab from here <laughs> Oh my god. These artifact lands. I've never seen a deck that uses the artifact lands as well. Because I've heard like yeah. Godo and Kennen use them to turn on their uh, Mox Opal because Kennen uses the extra mana. Godo needs the extra yep. mana to go fast. Yep. But I've never seen a deck effectively use these artifact lands to combo with them so seamlessly. Because what these. Yeah, they're really, really like critical pieces for the deck. Honestly. And. Even the downside, where I usually don't run them in my list because, you know, we talk about all the time, you don't want to feed Dockside. Like, when they combo this well in my deck, take the extra treasure if you want. I don't give a fuck. I'm in blue. Yeah. I'll either and counter the, the deck I mean, side the or... Deck feeds, the deck feeds Dockside like crazy anyways. Right. You know, I'm not worried about my lands feeding Dockside. <laughs> I hope that I always have a, a Torpor Orb or a Blind Obedience in play. Got you, got and you, that's, got you. that's the end of it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh my or, God. Or, or I make sure that I can stop them from winning and then I'll play my imposter mech. Uh, <laughs> All right. This, gotcha, deck loves, gotcha. this deck loves copying dock sides after it aggressively feeds them. <laughs> <laughs> I have to love that, brother. Oh my gosh. I want to get to uh, our I want to get to our uh, tutors real quick because these are very big packages but i really do yes. think they're they're possible only because of our colors and the great tutors we have in these colors so my yeah. question is do we have any other win cons that we want to touch on one last one it uh is uh, the other one with mind over matter okay. um and the one ring oh you just discard a card to discard a card to untap the one ring and you know you keep doing that and draw most of your library oh so the most loop or all depending on how many are left in your library got you because you, when you untap the one ring you'll net a caught you, you'll basically get an extra counter on the one ring to then discard an extra card untap it then tap it for three then for four then five and you'll eventually draw more cards than your library either has and or whatever the heck you need to do just to finish yeah. out the combo that's yep that's busted <laughs> okay y'all hold on let me say this again how broken this is you basically get turbo out your one ring on turn one or turn two which is a normal play pattern that every deck does if you see a mana vault or a mana crypt uh turn one you can get it out turn two and all you're yep. telling me is at this point if i cast mind over matter i win the game yeah 
you, know, you, you don't even, in theory, you don't even have to cast any more spells to do it. Uh, if you have Tameshi, if you have Tameshi already in play, uh, you draw a bunch of cards, uh, make your infinite mana with the artifact lands, and then yeah. kill everybody out with Codex, with a Codex Shredder that you don't even have to cast because you, you discard it and then cheat it into play with Tameshi. You're right. Uh, I've, I've yeah. done this through somebody. Somebody has, has silenced me. Uh, when I have Mind Over Matter on the stack, and I was like, "Okay, <laughs> are you sure I'm you I'm, do you have I, any other I, I, interaction to stop yeah, me? Because you're stopping it? your opponents from interacting with me, with me as well." So yeah, so so we we got there without casting any more spells in that game. Um, Man, I love that. Mm -hmm. I absolutely love that, dude. Um, dude. But that's it. That's it for win cons. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very last question. Are I'm seeing a bunch of uh, sorcery speed win cons. Do we have any instant speed win cons? I know our commander lim limits us to sorcery speed, but yeah, unfortunately, unfortunately, no instant speed. In, okay. in theory, if I played Born Upon the Wind, um, Hullbreaker, uh, and the Hullbreaker line could work, and uh, the the Mind Over Matter Wandering line could work. Okay. Um, I think it's. A little too clunky to th those are expensive upfront combos mm -hmm. that I, I think are, are difficult to just sort of go for it um, mm -hmm. at, at instant speed. You know, I'd be in a position where I'd have to be holding up quite a bit of mana to do that. Exactly. Um, whereas doing it on my turn, Tameshi along with you know lotus bloom uh specifically and is actually huge bursts of mana which allows me to do you know tons of stuff on my turn especially exactly. as the game goes on so it yeah. it's preferable to just play on my turn and understood uh, yeah plus, plus most of our silence effect is silence effects as well are better to do it on our turn and the biggest yeah. thing is if i can disagree i agree with what you said there um when I talk about my Marnie's list versus my Tasker list, I do have Born of Bone and in my Marnie's list because one of the best cards in the deck are Smothering Tide. You know what I'm saying? And by yeah. the time the Smothering yeah. Tide gets going with Marnie's, I'm drawing a shit ton of cards and plus I'm making a bunch of mana. So I don't care if I have to at instant speed do Born Upon the I'll silence and then Born Upon the Wind and then I'll play the 20 rocks I just drew and plus I have another 25 treasures. I don't care how many treasures it takes to win at instant right. speed. But in my tasker list, or and I can even see with this, uh, with this Tameshi list, it's like, okay, yeah, like yes, I may be running smothering tithe, and I may be even having a lot of artifacts and give me mana, but it still doesn't, it's not comparable. Like the list yeah. doesn't want to jump to go get smothering tithe. It wants to jump to get the blooms and the artifact lands. So let's lean into our strengths instead of trying to reach out to something that is kind of more half-assed. So I completely exactly. understand. You know what exactly. I'm saying? So yeah but we gotta we gotta find these pieces though because we we don't have we maybe I, the smallest combo is the two-piece combos so let's talk about our combos at this point our, our tutors to get to these combos like of course i'm seeing the tether at the seeker but take it away brother what's our what's our tutors man yeah so one of one of the as i mentioned like lotus bloom is like two, one of the best cards in the deck uh, it enables so much um especially if you have a couple lands in play you you know, three lands in play, Tameshi and a Lotus Bloom is, um, you know, plus six mana right there if you need it to be. Um, That's crazy. So it's finding Lotus Bloom um, is is super important. So you you in the tutor package see, um, you know, we have uh, reshape, uh, which you know X equals zero <laughs> and turn. Turn uh, turn a Chrome Mox into a, a Lotus Bloom. Yep. Um, your turn turn your Tap Mana Vault into a Lotus Bloom. <sighs> Transmute Artifact, same deal. Yep. Uh, obviously, better version of Reshape. Mm -hmm. Werve Invention, Tezzeret. All all four of these cards can put Lotus Bloom directly into play. Yes. Um, which is super super good. Uh, they also could find obviously the Artifact Lands if you need it. Fine. Uh, the One Ring Tezzeret is. The most efficient one ring tutor uh in terms of finding it playing at that turn uh really in the format technically uh it's one so basically one to tutor it uh and then you just put in and then you cast it got you uh, got you got you so 
you know, and and he's really good with the one ring already in play as well. Uh, mm. you untap it. Um, got you, got you, got you. Yeah, so th- those four um, find tons of combo pieces, obviously with Lotus Bloom being uh, one of the best. Artificer's Intuition um, mm. oh, yes. also Ooh. finds all finds all of the artifact combo pieces except for the one ring. Um, so this one, there's some really cool play patterns you can do with this one, like, you know, turn... You know, if you have like a turn one artificer's intuition and you have an art like one artifact in hand, um, you know, on your next turn you can discard that artifact, get Lotus Bloom, discard Lotus Bloom, get uh Jeweled Lotus, and then get Tameshi in play, activate Tameshi, get Lotus Bloom in play. Oh and, like, you did all that that's... You did all that for you so you have an artificer's intuition, Tameshi, uh, and a Lotus Bloom in play, and it costs you like like four total mana to do all that oh man i love that you were able to find a use for this tutor because literally i had one of my um one of my discord members were literally saying like yo like this card has crazy but potential no one's playing it and here you talking about this line i'm like you broke the fuck out this card bro like I'm yeah, not gonna this kick. card's super busted in tameshi and it's an enchantment for tameshi to rebuy oh amazing so that's five tutors do we have any other notable tutors we want to talk about good intuition is oh yep 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 you know probably probably uh no no need to explain how <laughs> stupid of a card intuition is especially in a deck that uh has a quote unquote underworld breach in the command zone considering how often we see uh intuition used in conjunction with actual factual underworld breach yeah 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 okay i have I have made some of the craziest intuition piles in the middle of games and people people just look at them like what the <laughs> which do we what do we give them here <laughs> cuz uh, they're like you know they you know they don't know what to exp- they don't even know like what I can find with it and then I show them like I show them a land a copy artifact and then like I some, sometimes it's literally I've like if they don't know if they don't know the copy artifact combo line and I have like some of the pieces already, but I needed the like the copy artifact in the artifact land. Right. And I just show them like, all right, you can you get to choose between copy artifact, ancient den, and soul ring. What do you want? <laughs> <laughs> They're like, what's correct here? And I know most people think like, take the land. What are you talking about? Like, <laughs> if they don't know any better. Sometimes they're... that's correct. If I've already played the land drop, it's actually pr- not a bad idea to put the land in my hand. I have to find a way to get it into the graveyard right, to right, get it right. in play. But I'm usually creating my pile with the knowledge of whether or not I have a land drop or not. So I can, you know, if I don't have a land drop that turn, you know, maybe I put Artificer's Intuition in that pile instead and tutor for the land mm. uh, and get it and then put it into the graveyard. Um, gotcha, so Artificer's gotcha. Intuition can sometimes fit into my normal intuition piles. Got you, got you, got you. That makes sense. Okay. I like that, big dog. I fuck with that. Okay. All right. So we. Uh, light- I'm also seeing a Mystical Tutor. Can't leave home without it. Looks yeah. good. Yeah. Um, muddle, the mi- muddle the Mixture. I love seeing that. It notably can go get our Artificer's, our, um, artificers Intuition. That's great to see. Uh, yeah. Let's Mine's see. Copy Artifact, too. And copy artifact and dress yeah, down so, and blind obi. Like there's a lot of great torpor orb with so many great two drops in here. Uh yep. do we have it's any It's a card that I don't leave home without muddle, it, honestly, if I'm not playing black. Like, yeah, I'm I'm not gonna lie, I, I love muddle. I love muddle so I, much. I actually have off and on played muddle in just straight up in blacklist. It's like, well, there's plenty of there's plenty of cards that this can find. It, especially if you're playing any type of control variant, because it's still a counter spell. Okay, yes, it costs two yeah, blue. Exactly. But if you're if it's a it's a counter spell that if you're holding up mana to, to interact with you because you're playing more of a control style, muddle venture muddle the mixture is just fine. It gets the job done. It stops a force as well just as well as any other counter spell does. You know what I'm saying? And the fact that it hits yep. instants and sorceries, I would argue I'd run this one over to spell because it's also a tutor. But what do I know? <laughs> So I love yeah. that, brother. I love that. No cap. Yeah, muddle, uh, muddle's great. E tutor is also it finds. Yep. E tutor find can find every single combo piece in the deck except Hellbreaker Horror. <sighs> Please, I ain't mad at that, bro, at all. Okay. I love. Uh, this. I would argue. I probably. I, I think I'm 
somewhere on Discord the other day, I made the argument like E Tutor is probably as good as it's ever been in CDH. Oh yeah, because it, it finds win cons, it finds Ristic studies, it finds mana crypts, like it, it just finds everything. It finds honestly out of all the top deck tutors, I think honestly uh, Mystical Tutor is the worst one, and that's not that is not because it's bad. It's because when you have a vampire tutor that can get anything, a cr uh, worldly tutor that can at that point find your dock side or any other bullshit you want to yeah. and then you have enlightened tutor now can get a draw engine with the one ring a draw engine with the Ristic or mystic you can also go get a mana crypt if you want to turn if you already have the draw engine in hand and if i can find yep. as you brought up combo pieces like what else do we have to say you know what i'm saying man like it's a great tutor man she's bro and the the other thing i really like um with tameshi is you know sometimes you draw the enlightened tutor for turn and you like well i really want this card the card that finds now you tameshi does give you a chance to draw a second card that turn if True. you need it to so you can you can e-tutor and immediately draw depending on and you know that might be a good play depending on what you're trying to find exactly and that that's the power of having drawn the command zone especially that's not super yep. expensive you know what i'm saying or you have to do yeah. jump some hoop to do it you know it's like yeah it's like having a, your own timna you know what i'm saying you just don't have a, to lot, a lot of time a lot of times tameshi is just like white bounce a land draw a card you know <laughs> for that turn it is is a common yeah common thing um and also have idyllic tutor uh, yep we were just uh, about to, yep seeing this one search your library for an enchantment card reveal it then put it into your hand okay to the hand tutor I'm not mad at that yeah so it's you know Two and a white is expensive for a card, a tutor that finds a single card, doesn't put it into play or anything. Right. Um, but the deck, you know, it does want, it does want to go a little deeper on tutors. Mm -hmm. uh, and this finds, you know, it finds copy artifact, it mm -hmm. finds mind over matter. Um, and a lot of the times the situations where you are going to be wanting to cast the idyllic tutor, you know, you have the you know you have like the lotus bloom in play so mm -hmm. um so you can you can kind of ignore these these chunkier costs sometimes right when you're in a position where you actually want to use the tutor like this right um, i hear that i hear that okay yeah i love that and i'm not seeing any other tutors uh, i'm of course ranger captain technically you know we yeah. and notably actually in this deck I'm only seeing the Esper Sentinel, but we also have a Hedron Arc, uh, a Hedron yes. Crab that can get as well. Yep, and I, there's been times I've found the Hedron Crab over the Esper Sentinel, depending on the situation uh -huh. uh, with it, because Hedron Crab can see a lot of cards in a hurry sometimes. Right, right. Mill yourself and like, okay, let's see yeah. what we hit. Right. Yep. And yep. when our commander there, can get things out. Oh, yeah, and when we have Underworld two... Breach in the graveyard. Go ahead, brother. Yeah. There's, there's two kind of hidden uh, hidden tutors there in the land drops uh, with Inventor's Fair and Urza Saga. <sighs> okay. All right. Before, of course, I love Urza Saga. Inventor's Fair is so slept on right now. I don't understand why more decks don't run it. Ever since the Prince of the One Ring, it should have. If you're a two or lower colored uh, commander, you need to be running Inventor's Fair, especially if you run a lot of artifacts. It's cracked. But I want to hear your opinion because I love Inventor's Fair. Yeah. I mean,. Four, four mana and tap to activate it is obviously a lot um but just having one more tutor in the deck for the one ring yes. one more tutor for you know whatever combo piece since obviously the deck can use uh, all sorts of artifacts to win the game with exactly um, just that one one more piece uh i've had a time where i've needed to use inventor's fair to cast mind to get a mind over matter in play and then i've untapped the Inventor's Fair uh, <laughs> to go get the One Ring uh, after, wow. after discarding a bunch of stuff with Mind Over Matter. Right, right, right. Oh, um, so, and so at this point, the Inventor's Fair just becomes that much more malleable. Even getting all yeah. your, you probably already said this, but getting all your artifact lands as well, because it does not say it in a specific type. It's just right. activated on, your, on the instep before your turn and get any artifact you need. And yeah, it yep. really helps close the distance. And we also have Urza Saga, though. Talk yeah. to me about that. Urza's, Urza Saga is so sick in Tameshi. Because oh. uh, it's an enchantment that Tameshi can get back. Oh, you're right. You're right. You're you, right. You can keep getting back Urza Saga. And basically every other turn, uh, you can you can tutor with it. 
um, oh. if you if you keep activating Temeshi the same turn that it, it uh, reaches the third chapter, you let it go to the graveyard and then oh, rebuy it. Oh, because it'll go to three, go to your graveyard, go put it back on one. Next turn, it'll go to two in the following turn. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Yep. So you know, you go get go get your soul ring if you need mana. Go get graph digger's cage if you want to turn off stuff in the in the pod or you right can, you know soul guide or ether spell bomb are useful here yeah um you know even trying to see a few more cars maybe find the codex shredder and mill yourself a little bit like it's it's so so versatile in what it can do especially when you know you can reuse it again so you're not like you're not kind of super stressed like oh should i get mana do i need to be disruptive here like you don't have to think too far down the road. You say, what do I need this turn? And then I can get the other thing two turns from now. Okay. That makes sense. A hundred percent. And I love, I love that you are able to like, you're able to really cycle Urza Saga to be very useful to you. Like outside of like graveyard hate and the opposition agent, you just, you're just chilling tutoring every other turn. Like it's nothing. And oh, I love that dude. Sometimes you're beating the crap out of the table with a car and struck every turn. <laughs> that don't hurt either. That don't hurt I have, either. I have, I have won games because I'm just sitting behind an army of four 12 12 car and strucks. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, how you dock the dock side now? <laughs> take, yeah. Go ahead and take the treasures. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I love that, brother. Okay. So we have an amazing tutor package. It's clear as day that you really thought deeply about it. The community that you, um, that you are working with is you all have really really dug into this i will say though that with being in azorius you're not limited on just tutors you're also having abundance of now of card draw effects if you can just honestly white like we all talk about the blue card draw effects but the white also has a crazy amount of card draw right now and talk yeah, to me brother i think i think white arguably if, if, after blue, I think white's main deck draw engines are probably the second best suite in the format. Oh, one hundred percent. All day. You know, ad nauseum is ad nauseum is ad nauseum and necropotence. I kind of put those in a different category. Yeah, more than Connie. Just like yeah, the the way that they're played is more of a all in uh, style. So they're they're not really card draw engines in the in the sense that these ones are but you know you have trouble in pairs archivist of Ogma, esper mm -hmm. sentinel are really really good cards and you know each each one of those cards has been like the primary engine behind wins yep. uh with this deck they've just you know I, i've kept hands off of you know a turn one archivist of Ogma. Um, yeah and it gets there because everyone's like well i'm not gonna not crack my fetches <laughs> i uh, i literally uh and that's a win-win for me either way if they don't want to crack their fetches exactly no i literally i uh, just was talking to one of my followers and there was like why are you running archivist in your marnie's deck and i'm like out like get a turn one or turn two archivist time let me know how you feel at the end of your game draws cards just, draws cards. It draws cards. It gains life because if you're playing more control or stacks, you need to, like that little bit of life gain actually makes a difference because sometimes yeah. they don't have the permanent. They don't have the way to remove the permanent, but they can remove the player. So being able to gain two or three life and draw those two or three cards every can, extra cards really does make it the can difference. Buy you another turn with your one ring. Too, Literally, like that. even that. Literally. Um. Yeah. Like. Uh, or your mana crypt flips, you know, that gets you another turn or two with yep. your mana crypt in play. Um, mm -hmm. So, yeah, Ar Archivist, Esper, uh, Trouble and Pairs are dope uh, white cards. E Tutor finds, you know, most of these cards too. So, I, I would almost include that yep. in, as a strength of white in terms of card draw. It finds 100%. your Ristic Study, it finds your One Ring, finds your Trouble, whatever. 100%. Um, and obviously. And obviously, Ristic and, and oh. Memora are in this deck. <laughs> if you're not playing those at this point, you all, I don't know what to tell you. Ristic Study and Mystic Remorda are the GOATs. Uh, for other card draw and, like, I'll just say Advantage Engines, we can also throw Smothering Tithe, and this is a great. We'll talk more of that on Ramp, but some other yeah. card draw, baby card draw effects, but they do a great job as Dress Down, get you the one card to replace itself. Um, we've already touched on Soul Guide Lantern. To uh, be able to just pay the one and draw, but it's also an infinite mana outlet with our commander, really kills it. Yeah, so Soul, Soul Guide Ether, um, you know, just Ether, rebuying yeah. those sometimes. Um, just being able to use Tameshi to gain gain that little bit of advantage through 
you know, you, you, throughout the game, I, I would say Tameshi probably draws like two, somewhere between two and four cards. Yeah. Through a typical game, nothing crazy uh, out of the command zone. Certainly yeah. not Timna level. Um, but a lot of games are won on the margins, and if you see just a few extra cards, uh, mm -hmm. basically for free out of your command zone, like that can be the difference. Hundred um, percent. That's why, like, like Codex Shredder is, is something that I, I kind of consider to be sort of a, as, a, as a card card advantage. Got you. Uh, yep, that makes sense. That makes sense. A lot of times, it's just I'm just milling myself, uh, trying to see, you know, just see each turn cycle. I want to see one more card. You know, right. I might mill my Lotus Bloom. I could mill my Ristic Study. I, I can get these cards back. Mm -hmm. um, that's the other sweet thing about a lot of these card draw engines in the deck is that Tameshi can rebuy them. Exactly. Um, nobody wants a Ristic Study in play, and Tameshi makes it really hard for them to for there to not be a Ristic Study in play. Yeah. Um, or you know you don't want to you don't want to pay the three mana for your Remora uh, on your upkeep anymore. Right. Right. So you right. let it die, and then you rebuy it for two mana. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Oh, I, I love hearing that because I love me a good, like, healthy fish. Like, one of the best things ever that if, if you've never experienced is not you, but I'm sure you have. But if the audience you have never experienced this is, like, getting to turn one fish down and then just drawing nothing but fast mana, like a mana crypt and a soul ring and all, and, like, your talismans to be able to keep the fish around till it's, like, hits three, four, because yeah. you don't care about it at that point. Late game fishes. They just go crazy, man. As, as, good, as, as good as early game fish is um late game fish that you just is stick you know you got six seven mana in play and this thing's gonna stick around until the game ends like it's insane it really it, is and the fact that you can use your codex shredder to kind of do a similar thing to help either find that late game fish or even just be that to find another card draw engine I, I definitely i hear you there for that codex shredder man I actually just noticed something in our lit in the list we're seeing. Of course, all right, first of all, Seagate Restoration. Don't know how often we get seven mana, but it's there. I'm gonna be honest. Like run it. Come on, I'm not mad at that. Um yeah. I'm seeing it to fairy. Think about Go ahead, brother. Uh think about with Seagate also is when you Tameshi's act if you know, you activate Tameshi a few times, you end up with a few lands stuck in hand. Yeah. It's so, so common for Tameshi to be in a situation where you have six, seven, eight, nine cards in hand during your turn. Mm. Like Seagate is so easy to just draw, you know, draw eight plus cards with. Yeah. And, you know, it costs seven mana to do it. Um, but, you know, maybe, you know, like Lotus Bloom plus Seagate in your hand and like a handful of lands in play is like really, really good. You generate a ton oh, of mana, right. yeah. draw a bunch of cards and like, and then you know go from there past turn um, to, to 16 plus cards in hand at that point yeah and you can even play it as a land early if you need the mana and return it with tameshi oh if you need the cards. yes because if you're shitting on if you're sitting on a shit ton of mana at that point you're like okay i don't have a plan but i have the seagate let me bounce it to my hand put something yeah. onto the battlefield and then let's cast the seagate to find some more action whether it's interaction yep. or a win con i love yep. that that's a please i didn't even think about that um of course, we've already talked about the Esper and the Arcvis. We can see, I kind of see Teferi as a slight bit of a, that uh, card draw because it does have the card draw on the minus three. But I really wanted to ask you, we have a lot of zero mana rocks and we have Teferi. I'm not seeing the Displacer Kitten though. Talk to me about that. So th this, is, this is a point of contention. Naestrom, the, uh, the other uh, Tameshi pilot uh, that I mentioned earlier um, that won the event, that other event. Um, he does play Displacer Kitten. Right. Um, and I think it's it's a card that I could run. Mm -hmm. uh, it works with the copy artifact com combo as well to outlet because you flicker Tameshi to reset him. Mm, uh, gotcha. So there, there's, there is good value to be gained in playing Kitten. Mm -hmm. The only thing that's keeping me off of it right now is the fact that it can't be it can't be tutored for in in the colors. Uh, Recruiter the guard exists, but then I'm that, not now a you have to run of, an extra tutor that you you don't want to run. Yeah, and again, you know, three mana. I'm playing idyllic tutor, um, mm. which is obviously three mana. But Recruiter the guard, you know, similar. It's it's narrow in what it can find, um, and and really, you know. Uh, 
I'm, I'm also playing a Torp Orb in the deck. Uh, mm -hmm. So I could try to turn off my own tutor. Um, yeah. So I'm a little... A, a little wary of, of, of playing it uh but i have had i have had those discussions with people about whether yeah. i should be on it or not obviously i can't tutor hellbreaker horror either right right um, right but that that one is is like if i draw that and can resolve it that's like way way more way closer to a like a one card win con right whereas right, kitten, right. kitten does still need like another specific card that I also can't tutor for. Right, uh, right, right. In play. So it's I'll, it's a consideration, but uh I'm not on it right now at least. No, I hear that. I'll definitely say this. This is my opinion on it. And I want to we, we'll continue to touch on some protection pieces in a second, but the reason I think it will be a great inclusion is because and I keep uh Harney uh focusing back to my Marnie's deck because seeing these white blue colors i've come to realize that the best card draw in our current format is in white and blue period like we talk about blue a lot draws cards but they've been giving white these crazy draw engines we just got done talking about archivist augma esper sentinel esper sentinel we have trouble in pairs even if you want to go from mangar the diplomat too if you're really fiending for more draw like for card draw you have it in white and blue and yeah. what i find a lot of times in my marnia's deck is like outside of tutors like in black i lean on those white and blue card draw engines and sometimes you can draw so many cards that you'll just naturally get them granted yeah, yeah. i also do have d tutor and vampire tutor to get the piece you know what i'm saying like about to go yeah. to fairy vamp for the uh or even a wish claw talisman to go get whatever i need i do hear that i think it may be yeah. worth the thought it but the only the only thing i would say is I would want to explore and maybe think about all the synergists, all the synergy that the kitten can add for my deck. Because if kitten is just the combo piece, I'm like, eh. But if it's a synergy beast, which you kind of talked about, it does reset the Tameshi. There may be some yeah. legs on it, baby yeah. legs, but yeah, it may it, be some legs in it. Yeah, and it's, it's it's like I said, like it's absolutely a card that is is on my radar um, to play, and it it, it very well may be. The case that it's incorrect for me to be off it right now um the deck feels good where it's at yeah. as far as the win con so it's not something that i feel pressured to right. play um you know maybe maybe in the past uh where you know the one ring didn't exist uh yeah and the deck if and you know the, maybe the deck wasn't on mind over uh right a while back right admit, there's more pressure for uh win con density so yeah um yeah. No, I, I definitely, yeah. I definitely yeah. hear you there, brother. It, just a thought that went that came to my mind. Like I love the kitten to fairy and zero mana rock, and but you did bring up some good points because if you can't tutor it, why are we running it? And it's like the, yeah. then it comes yeah. the problem of consistency. Because if I if I have one card draw left in my deck, do I want a mind over matter with the one ring I've had on turn since turn two, or do I want to see a displacer kitten that? I have no idea where my Teferi's at in my list. So yeah, I do yeah. hear you there, brother. I do hear you there. Um, but we've talked about one thing I was bringing up this place again, because it's a great protection piece as well. So what are some protection pieces we, in our deck to both protect our board ourselves and like even stop people from interacting with us when we want to go for those juicy wins? Yeah. So we got the, um, you know, obviously silence, grand abolisher, mm -hmm. ranger captain yep. are, are sort of the, the three that you see in, basically every white deck it's probably wrong to not be on all three of these <laughs> right um, and the teferi just, as well yeah teferi um i that i'm more recently on teferi but you know, just having having uh one more silence effect that you know it bound maybe it bounces something that's stopping me from combo so i can resolve it and then um you know bounce a, a curse totem that's keeping me from comboing or a dothy right or, right right uh, you know collector of whatever um thing that's in my way uh so that utility of, of silence plus removal um and m more or less uncounterable removal in that regard uh, right. assuming teferi resolves um it, it's it's a really good card especially especially with like the the knowledge of of the correct play patterns with it of not not pulling the trigger on him too early the way that i think people tried to do 
the first time around when uh, he was printed, people were trying him out. Right. Um, right. Playing him too early and throwing games with it. Same sort of same deal as what we see with like a defense grid that comes down and doesn't uh, coincide with a win attempt. Um, yeah. So just being careful about that. Um, I could be defense grid is something that's been discussed since mm. it's so accessible in the deck. True. That's very true. Especially when um, you have the transmuter and reshape that can just say, oh, oh my transmute resolves, defense grid. Conversation yeah, exactly. over. Yeah, exactly. So that that ambiguity of the straight to battlefield tutors the same way as stuff like Neoform and Eldritch Evolution have. You have some of that right. with the straight to battlefield artifact tutors. Um, I think the reason we're not on, on grid right now is just it's it's definitely worse than the other four that we're already on. Yeah. Hundred um, percent, and there's not like there's not like a huge feeling of like oh wow we need to be on even more silence effects. I hear um, you. Yeah, I agree. I, when you're in it, white, it, it is a good card that's yeah. I think has some has some merit in especially Tameshi, uh, considering the tutor package, and you know you could even be in situations where you cheat in uh, defense grid without casting a spell you know you milled it or discarded it yeah no i definitely hear that i 100 percent agree once you're in white like it's like uh do i need to run defense grid or granted yeah. you're not in green but like if you had the white the white blue green like do you need dosen when you have rager do you need defense grid when you have grand abolisher these effects yeah, that exactly. don't tr like outside of teferi which i mean okay if you play it naked okay yes you could throw a game if you don't have counter magic to stop your opponents like you're usually able to get it done um but pretty well with just those silence effects by themselves. I'm also seeing yeah. a spell site Skype though, which I love to see. You know, we can get that with yeah, our muddle spell miniature. Skite's, spell Skype's dope. Um, being able to, you know, protection against something like Bowmasters. Mm -hmm. um, being able, just being able to to protect your your valuable pieces uh, because opponents uh, opponents essentially need like. In a single turn cycle, they need to have two pieces of removal mm -hmm. for, um, you know, say my, my Rhystic Study. Exactly. Because uh, if you just kill the Spell Sight, Spell Skite, and don't have the follow-up, I can get the Spell Skite back the next turn <laughs> with Tameshi. Right, 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 right. So it does a lot of work uh, dissuading uh, interaction while it's in play. Right, 100%. I hear that, and brother. It can, uh, let some, me see. It, there are some certain combos that it disrupts as well. Um, you know, stuff like mm -hmm. um, certain Kiki, uh, not Kiki. Yeah, that's uh, it. Yeah, Kiki Jiki. Some, Kiki some Jiki. of the Kiki combos it does stop. Like, uh, I think like the the zealous conscripts, mm -hmm. uh, or the, like the pet, the blue ones. Really, is the big ones, the Pestermites and right, and um, even the Xarks. Yeah, the combat celebrants as well. Like being able to redirect that target, or even keep stacks pieces or other. I think. Well, I think Kiki. Kiki's just creatures you control, so you have to you have to redirect the uh, oh. the Kiki bottoms uh, targeting abilities. So it, it won't work for all of them. Right, but if you're they target, right. you're one hundred percent right. Kiki Jiki does say uh, create a token that's a copy of target non legendary creature you control. It's very similar to Rio and your fire dance. Yeah, you're one hundred percent right there. Yeah, yeah. So you'd have to stop, stop the zealous constructs targeting ability, not the uh, Kiki beat Jiki ability. That makes sense. And it's okay. not it's not probably not super relevant because I think the most common one to see nowadays is Village Bell Ringer. Right. Um, but you never know when it can come up. Like I said, or um, even if someone tries to, to drop it to Fairy and then bounce their own freaking Soul Ring, you can redirect that if I'm correct, right? Yeah. So yeah. that Just I mean, stop, stop aside from bouncing a Dock Side if they want to. There if you they go. They want to reuse a Dock Side. Uh, it stops Derevi based stuff. Oh yeah. So you can actually you can actually stop the Chile to Revy comboing right uh with spell sky so it's got a lot of like bonus uh synergies here and there uh, that makes me really like it and the fact that it's an artifact that i can find like off a word of invention if i need to flash it in or something 100 percent. okay i love to see that uh i'm looking through of course we'll talk about our counter spell suite but we can count those as protection pieces as well um, but I'm um, outside of that. I think we've touched all of them. Any other pieces that really help protect your combos or protect yourself in uh, those moments of need? 
I think that, yeah, I think that's about it. The uh, Obviously, you know, things like t using Tameshi plus ways to put stuff in the graveyard is like a, a cheeky way to uh, sort of get things in underneath stack interaction, uh, mm -hmm. which can be super valuable Okay. Um, as, a, as a means to, you know, table's holding up a bunch of blue mana and you just, uh, you know, you, disc you discard the one ring and then put it into play with Tameshi. Got gotcha. you. Sorry, Forza. Sorry, Forza Will players. <laughs> right, right, right. This one's off limits. Right, right. Exactly, exactly. And yeah, that makes a hundred percent sense. And actually, if we can go back for two seconds, I just realized we missed one tutor. Surveyors, uh, surveyor scope. Yeah. So that th this is, I think, surveyor scope is is the only deck in the for in CDH that you're gonna find playing surveyor scope. <laughs> <laughs> this card this card is so so good in Tameshi. Dude. It's so good. I mean she's bro, cause like if you all are not familiar with it, uh Surveyor Scope says um you can tap it and exile Surveyor Scope. So you can't loop it, but it's pretty cool still because it says search your library for up to X basic land cards, where X is the number of players who control at least two more lands than you. Put those cards into the battlefield, then shuffle. Not even tapped at that. It just not even it just puts them into not the battle. Not even tapped. Not even tapped. Which is amazing because when this, you're... Oh, go ahead, brother. Go ahead. This thing is mana positive, like, <laughs> half the time when you cast it. Like, it's, it's just two, two mana make three, uh, like, that turn so, so often. Oh, man. And if you sequence it right, you can literally just, before you do your land drop, survey a scope, fill your, your board up, and then still be able to make your land drop for that turn, which is ridiculous, man. And then you have a ton of Tameshi activations available if you need it. Oh, I love this. Okay. All right. So, all right. you know, maybe you got a Lotus Bloom in your graveyard and uh -huh. your Surveyor Scope plus Lotus Bloom is, you know, just a lot of mana. <laughs> a lot of fucking mana. And so that uh, at that point, that Seagate, Restora Seagate Restoration is looking a lot more realistic at this point. Yeah. Yeah. Scope, scope plus Bloom plus Seagate, like, might as well be a combo. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's so it's so much mana so many cards like what the chances mean? of not getting there from that spot is is pretty low exactly i don't know how you yeah i don't know what else to tell you about that um with that being said we also have we want to talk about this interaction suite like looking through we have a lot of great interaction but so we have a great uh counter spell package i'm seeing offer baby rift and big rift uh dispel we talked briefly about that one um both kind of it's a little bit on the chopping block if i remember correctly yeah yeah it'd be replaced with um you know spell snare spell pierce um i don't know i don't know if i like miscast a ton right now i think i'd probably just rather the spell pierce to hit more things even yeah. though it's a little easier to play around yeah um but other than that it's like the pretty it's the pretty standard blue stack interaction package i think yeah Fierce, Fluster, Force of Negation, Force of Wheel, Mana Drain. I love this counter spell. Uh, Middle Mist Step, Migrate Track, Mull the Mixture, Pact of Negation. People stopped running it recently. I'm like, y'all are tweaking. Uh, we also got Swan Song. We have Source to Plowshare. Love to see it. Get Lost. Really cool. Is there any synergy based things or is this just a generically a good uh, removal spell for you? Yeah, so this uh, this was, uh, it took the place, I was playing Path to Exile for a little while, this took that spot, uh, obviously another mana, but it hits, um, hits Ristic Studies, mm. um, hits Underworld Breaches, mm. and, you know, yep. obviously, obviously, you know, Breach Resolving is, is sort of really where you want to, you know, fight your battle, but sometimes that's not not in the cards and if you have one more one more spell in your hand that gives you a chance um killing an opposing blind obedience that's in your way or um it doesn't hit no rod but it hits collect roof or stony silence exactly oh uh, yeah no you hit, definitely it can hit there. karn so it hits three out of the four no rod effects oh perfect uh, then. yeah you know you can hit and hit some of the uh planeswalkers uh for the the normal sys a build right exactly disrupt the loop so it's the the flexibility of being able to hit creatures enchantments and planeswalkers right now uh i like and giving people map tokens has been <laughs> not too much of a downside 
Yeah, like I, I, I'm be honest. It's pay one, tap it, sacrifice this artifact, target creature you control, explorers. That's a whole nother yeah. key ability where you reveal the top card. If it's a land, put it into play. If it's a non land card, either put it into your graveyard or leave it on top of your library, if I remember correctly. Uh, if it's a land, you put it into hand, but otherwise, yeah. Yeah, okay. I'm going to be honest. If, if you lose the game to a map token, I don't know if you're playing CDH. Yeah. I mean, I, I had a, I had a game. I, I, I destroyed something with Get Lost, and I cast an imposter mech on somebody's dock side for a bonus to two treasures. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that'd be please. At that point, that's amazing. Okay. Uh, let's see. Um, I think we pretty much touched. We either spell bomb, great interaction spell, Codex Shredder, say goodbye to top deck tutors. Uh, we'll talk about stacks in a second, but let's. Oh, portable hole, great removal spell for non land. Uh, permanents with um, two or less on your opponent's board. Great. It exiles it until it portable hole leaves. Um, you got you Soul Guide Lantern. That's the other thing. Is, as an artifact, you can keep getting it back even if people are destroying it. Mm, to make the problemary card stay gone. Yep. 100%. Uh, Soul Guide Lantern. And does that. And the Dress Down. We briefly talked about it. Uh, any reason for the choice of Dress Down? Uh, it's just, a, it's, I like it as this sort of alternative, like alternative angle on, on interacting with various combos, um, that has, has some, some proactive utility as well. Um, as, as far as, you know, turning off some stuff for your turn, right? Obviously I can't Tameshi combo with dress down and play. I can do mind over matter one ring. hundred percent. Um, and sometimes, you know, I need to, you know, I play dress down and then uh, to play around certain effects because I need to, you know, maybe there's a op agent in play and I need to tutor to win that turn. So right, dress down, right, right. tutor, some way of bouncing the dress down and, and go from there okay. or whatever. So it's, it occupies a, a niche that I like. Um, for the deck and you know technically it can be it can be returned with Tameshi if, if for some strange reason you need to 100 um yeah yeah so i'm I seeing like i'm seeing those same synergies and i want to make sure we speed up just so we can get you in some gameplay because we gotta see this you've been pumping you've been really pumping me up about this deck a lot brother um i'll just speed through these i see a seal of removal and a seal of cleansing have that same dress down uh looping effect with our commander uh, let's see any and we have the cephalic coliseum stop some thousands but i'm gonna be honest we talk about that being a thing but I, i'm gonna be honest I it's rare it's, it's very rare. rare you get you catch somebody off guard people are too hip to it nowadays um yeah. when it comes to uh, any other interaction pieces you may want to touch on oh removal uh, of supreme verdict i actually been mean to ask you about that one since i saw it talk to me about that yeah so boards can get clogged with a lot of creatures uh i i find in the meta, um, you know, you got Kinnon decks and Sissé decks, um, even the Gila's, um, even just the like Blue Farm, you know, uh, they have Timna and Krom and some, something else stupid in play. Right. Um, just having that four mana, uncounterable, no questions <laughs> asked, get it all out of here. Um, <laughs> get it all Tameshi, out of here. I don't want to talk about it. Even if Tameshi's in play, you know, it's it being a three mana commander with only a single color pip. He's relatively easy to recast if he's if he does get destroyed by Supreme Verdict. Right. So I'm not super concerned in that regard. If I'm in the situation where I want to wipe, like it's okay to sacrifice my commander as part of that. Got you. Okay, hundred percent. Okay, that sounds good. Uh, let's see. I don't see any more really interaction that I would like to talk about, but I would love to talk on some stacks pieces, brother. Yeah. So not not super deep, um, but a few. A few few of the more powerful ones uh or ones that have some like good synergies with the deck uh Dranith magistrate obviously insane all day card. every day uh in in commander format blind obedience uh is is really good right now mm. especially as an asymmetrical piece where i can i can hate on artifacts while being an artifact centric deck myself yep um notably not seeing a dauntless dismantler but i'm guessing it destroying a lot of your own zero metal rocks is not really what we want yeah i uh, of course, I don't know how often I would be in the position where I want to activate it, but the fact that it does hit a lot of my stuff, including potentially lands, 
Uh, oh, you're right. Yeah. I've seen other people lose land, lose. Uh, you know, if it's a, a deck that's playing like Great Furnace, yeah, for some artifact synergy, I, I've seen I've seen them lose their Great Furnace to a dismantle. I'm like, oh, rough. That man. does not look good. Uh, yeah, that's tough, man. Yeah, but uh, Torp Torp Orbs a great card uh, right now. With everybody wants to jam their dock size into play. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, you know, stop Stasis Oracle, mm -hmm. uh, and I can find it off of off of Word of Invention. So Word of Invention is almost like a, a hidden additional piece of interaction in the yeah, deck. Yeah, hundred It has so many. It has really good silver bullets I can find. Draft exactly. Digger's Cage. Oh, can't leave home without it, bro. Card, card's so so good right now. I think if you can like, if you can easily, if you can easily support it, I think it's it's a, a worthwhile card to at least consider. Um, it stops cannons. It stops breaches. Yeah. Um, it obviously doesn't stop you know, cannon casting the thing that it from hand. But we'll cross I, that bridge when we get there. To, exactly. <laughs> I want to prevent them from being able to spend spend seven to look five cards deep to find it. I want to make them draw it naturally. Exactly. Play fair, just like us, bro. Be like, be exactly. with the common folk. <laughs> yeah. It doesn't stop. It doesn't turn off everything for sisa decks, but it it's at least a mild hindrance right um, right you know they can't they can't neoform for their dock sides they have to they have to have the legends in play to go get the planeswalkers if they're on them or they can't find a meal right or, yeah or so 100%. it's not a great uh, not a great great answer to what sis a does because sis a is so flexible um but it's it's not irrelevant either um and Soul got in turn another another great breach uh, piece to just have in hand mm -hmm. and rattlesnake. Does at the end of the day just say like, oh, you're trying to win with breach? Okay, that's very cute. Activate yeah. Soul Guy Lens. So let's just let's just stop yeah. that right there. I yeah, love that. Yeah. Okay, uh, not seeing too many other stacks pieces, but our stacks package is getting there exactly where we need to stop those commanders from getting cast. Stop Dockside, which we feed a lot, but when we have the pieces to answer it, that's a bridge we're willing to cross. Uh, and so at this point. Uh, I want to talk quickly about ramp, but at this point, I don't even know if there's a card that's not ramping you in some type of way. Even everything from yeah. Hedron Crab getting you ramp to Ranger getting the Hedron Cab to get you ramp, all your tutors get you ramp. <laughs> Is there a, yeah. g give me your top three favorite ramp pieces in this deck since we have so many amazing pieces. It's it's probably it's probably got to be Tithe, Scope, and Lotus Bloom. Oh. Those, those are the card. Those are the three that just like so consistently feel like I'm doing broken things when they're in play. <laughs> I definitely feel that. Yeah, and we just got done talking about Surveyor Scope, and y'all like I've seen, I played against this before in the Tameshi deck. It's one of the most impressive things I've ever seen in my life. It yeah, yeah I fucking love it. I wish it said three sacrifice. landfall triggers for Hedron Crab. You said what? It's three landfall triggers for Hedron Crab. Oh! Oh, it's hilarious like a two two mana two mana make three mana draw nine cards like, <laughs> oh, fuck. oh that's busted man i freaking love that and of course if you all are not if you've never played against same thing with smothering tithe if you've never played against smothering tithe where have you been i do this card is amazing it if you so good. if you can get it down early enough then it, the game is guaranteed to be yours especially if you can back it up with some form of card draw so you can use all the money you're creating it's amazing uh yeah. with that being said pays for all your spells like if you get the stick like you never have mana problems again never that entire game is just taken care of yeah. even if they don't get an aggressive draw engine down those extra three treasures every rotation or time walking your opponents to say oh we'll pay for it okay that's fine i don't care the game's gonna go slower and then i'm gonna end up winning either way you know what i'm exactly. saying so yeah uh We've pretty much already touched on the mana base when it comes to your land drops as well. Like we've talked about our artifact lands, our land tutors. We've also talked about the only one I we I guess we haven't touched in is Odawara as a interaction piece, but you can't leave home without it. So I'm not going to try to. Uh, yeah, Odawara is great. Um, Minamo uh, is kind of free in a two color deck. Hundred percent. the ring. Uh, that's that's what it's here for. Mm -hmm. it feels really good when it does it. And uh the only the the one the one really one maybe non-obvious uh one there is meticulous archive i was just uh, about new, to new ask you about deck. that brother i was literally like 
Huh, tap land. Oh, oh well, no, no, this is the new surveil land. Ah, yeah. okay, keep yeah, going. So this, this one has actually very quickly solidified itself in the list. It does enter tapped, um, but it the surveil, uh, being able to surveil off of a fetch land, like, you know, you sit there, hold up your fetch land, and you go, and if you don't need that fetch land that turn for something, you're able to go get the meticulous archive before you untap, surveil. I'd say 70% of the time, probably, I'm, I'm milling the card with this because it's either interaction I don't need in that spot, or it's something I can rebuy with Tameshi. Mm. Um, so, you know, two thirds of the time, maybe more, surveil is, is basically draw a card uh, on a Love land. Love that, okay. And then uh, Tameshi, it's, it can form a sort of, you know, like, if you if you really need card velocity uh, and you don't have something else in play like a Ristic, like a One Ring, uh, Tameshi plus Meticulous Archive, resetting the archive and replaying it for the surveil. Mm. Um, so you get to you know you get to see again talking talking about Tameshi seeing two or three two or three four additional cards a game mm. with his triggered ability, uh, Meticulous Archives being played two or three times a game and seeing two or three additional cards from it like those those margins can matter exactly um especially um and this is something we were talking about today uh with smashy people just the, be the ability to keep a, a low mull that's like a fetch land maybe two lands one of them's a fetch one of and you have like maybe ramp in your hand you you can keep a low mull with that fetch land because if you get you can get to meshi in play you like right there you have the means to see several additional cards in just the first couple turns exactly exactly and i have to i cannot speak on that just enough it the one or two extra really car, cards really can make the difference between winning and losing like yep. it really does like that's the reason we fight over getting those draw engines down so early because it okay you, if i get a turn one fish down versus a turn two i may see two one or two extra cards but that really can be the difference between getting the fast minute down to win or in the late game getting the last piece of the combo to just close the game out so i can't agree with you more and i'm really happy that you were find able to find such a good use for this land because i don't have a, de a deck right now to run any of these uh surveil lands but I think they have a lot of potential, and you're obviously fine. Yeah, really showing it. Uh, yeah, I think two color decks. I, I think a lot of two color decks should at least try try their their singular surveil land out. Yeah. Um, it's one slot. It's rare that it's going to end up in your opening hand. It's really easy to just you know. So many times you end step two to for a shock fetch for a shock land because you don't want to take the two damage. Right. This is just better. In, yeah. in every single one of those situations i agree now before before we move on to some test hands and some mulligans uh i'm seeing one snow cover planes in here uh i'm not sure if it's also for the snow cover island what's the reason for that brother uh this this was just based on uh i i wanted to make sure my deck my moxfield deck list matched what my my physical deck list uh oh. was for for the tournament uh, so I made a quick swap. Normally, I default to uh, I default to doing all snow basics. Um, but in my in my physical paper list, I have um, like foil full arts uh, from, for all the basics in there. So I had you better to flex on them now. What, <laughs> I had to do based off of what's what in the actual physical list. I, I didn't got wanna, you, brother. Yeah. The last thing I wanted to do is show for a tournament and get you know. Oh, your deck list is uh, doesn't match your <laughs> physical list because you know these are this is a, a snow land and you know it doesn't <laughs> say you're running a snow land in, online. I would be so frustrated with these people. I'm like, get, get just leave, just leave. I'm not doing this with you all. Yeah, I didn't. I'm not gonna take any chances. Exactly. No, I definitely hear you there. Well, before we run these test hands, uh, are there any other notable categories or anything you want to talk about this amazing Tameshi list, brother? Uh, I think we covered it all. I mean, uh, we, didn't, we didn't talk about clones, but uh, specifically, but you know, copy artifact, imposter mech, Phyrexian metamorph. Yep. Um, great, great cards right now. Obviously, copy artifact is the most narrow. 
yeah. generally, but it copies one rings um, yeah, when it's not comboing, which is great. Mm -hmm. um, Imposter mech. I don't have a ton of creatures I want to copy, but other people do, and it's only two mana. Mm -hmm. It's not a creature itself, so great thing to copy a Bowmaster with. Yep. Um, oh, and, you know. Dude, that's such a great combo. The Imposter mech, uh, Bowmaster, the ability to just take it and be like, unless you have an artifact removal, this Bowmaster yeah. is not going anywhere. <laughs> like, yeah. So. I've also had it like it live it, you know it lives through board wipes so i've yep. like copied a cannon uh with it and and somebody else's board wipe i'm like i still have a cannon <laughs> and you know six mana from artifacts in play exactly i i I'm love that easily so much. recast to meshy exactly um very quickly i'm seeing that we didn't talk about this interaction spell winds of rebuke rings winds of rebuke return target nylon permanent to its owner's hand so that triggers your commander each player puts the top two cards to their library. Oh, so this for you says draw three cards for two mana. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. Remo bounce, bounce something, draw three. Uh, kind of. Yeah. Basically. So you draw one to hand for your commander and then milling two in the graveyard, you basically have seen two new cards for your Tameshi to be able to get. Okay. Yeah. So another another case of just seeing a few extra cards uh, can make make the difference and having it on a remove on a flexible removal spell. Uh, that I kind of already want to be playing um, is is nice. So you you're just gaining gaining incremental value on the margins there with even your interaction spells. Exactly. And I'm t all I can see is that you are not letting one top deck slooter slide in this list. I kid you. <laughs> no. I'm talking about. I don't want y'all to try to worldly tutor, mystical tutor, vampiric. None of that slide in this. I have gotten so many people uh, off their off their imp seals. Oh, nice, nice, man. nice turn one imp seal. Uh, here's a here's a codex shredder. No, <laughs> not my bad. I've, had, pe I've no. had people forget, and I've had people forget, and they'll like end step vamp, and I'm sitting there with codex shredder. Like, what are you doing? What are you doing, dude? Come on, it's not. Or I'll sit there. I'll. If I have Hedron Crab in play and I don't immediately need the land, I'm just gonna sit there, at yeah. least for that turn cycle. Exactly. And I've gotten people with that too. I'm like, come on, guys, read my cards. <laughs> I'm for now. Need to stop uh, down these low color decks, man. Uh, I think we <laughs> but... getting got by, getting got by the onboard tricks. <laughs> oh yeah, I remember my fun. My funnest onboard trick is Manamo untapping my large commanders. So I'll intentionally tap. I'll attack with my commander and then they'll attack me. Oh, it's a free Tim the attacker. And they'll attack me, nope. okay. Uh in response to blockers, I'm gonna activate the Vidavo. <laughs> yeah. That is the funnest. I gotcha in life. Like if I have extra mana, I just don't care. Like, all right, I got extra mana. Like, let's see who I can catch. So yeah. Yep. Yep. That's a fun one. Uh, but outside that, I think we, outside of that, I think we talked about everything. Uh uh, the only other question I have is: We have any uh, other cute tricks we're doing with Tezra? Or is this just purely a tutor? Uh tutor, tutor first. Uh, more than anything else, sometimes sometimes it untaps stuff. Um, I've never altered it. Okay. Um, so m more often than not, Tezra is a five mana one ring. Like that's that's the primary thing that he does. Um, yeah. Sometimes. It, you know, a, a specific example. I had a game. I couldn't win that turn. I was really feeding the hell out of a do out of dockside. Yeah. Uh, if one came down, so I was, and I could protect the Tezzeret because uh, I had like a construct in play or something. Right, right, right. Um, so I'm like, all right, I'm gonna down take Tez by two. I'm gonna get the Torpor Orb because I don't want to lose to a dockside right now. <sighs> yeah. And then the next turn, I used him to find Lotus Bloom because uh, I was able to no. at that point put myself in a position to win so the double tutor aspect of it yeah um every once in a while more often than not he won't he won't get more than one tutor because right. it'll either be for the one ring or i'll tutor and then you know a crumb will kill him right exactly um, but every once in a while double tutor with him and that's just that by itself is like insanely good exactly 100 percent. okay well, with that said, we've had the full flavor of what this deck does. And before we actually get to see it in action, I want to show the people it's a couple play test hands. And I'm going to read them off to you just so they can get a feeling for it. We will go ahead and uh, just shuffle up into a very fresh hand. We're going to say it audibly and just let me know which, if it's a keeper mode. We have first seven. Let's say you're going, uh, I'm going to roll a, a D8. 
I'm gonna roll a D8 and let's see what turn you're going. You're going second. You're going second. And let's say our opponents are, you got T and K going first, you got Dahada going third, and you got Obnixilis going fourth. And it's you All in right. second place. All right, so let's see this first three, seven. Three decks that want their dock side. Decks that want their dock side. All right. This first seven is a one lander. It's one island, arcane signet, Savine's Reclamation, Dispel, Cyclonic Rift, Force Negation, and Supreme Verdict. Yeah, that's going back. All right, let's see a second seven. Second seven, okay. We have a Mox Amber, Lotus Bloom, Ancient Den, Grand Abolisher, Get Lost, Intuition, and Phyrexian Metamorph. Yeah, this is another... It's, it's, it's almost deceiving. The Lotus Bloom is obviously an important card for the deck, but it's a card that we really don't like to draw. Right. Um because it, it can't be cast so right um realistically we'd want that to be like a jeweled lotus instead got you to help um, get the commander turn out. on turn on the mox amber mm -hmm. um so yeah i would send this one back as well all right let's check out a six okay i think we're rewarded oh we have the meticulous archive a gemstone caverns an island a soul ring an artificer's intuition a copy artifact and a cyclonic rift yeah, this is one. This is one that we can definitely, uh, definitely keep. This one, We're probably the gemstone. Definitely going to utilize the gemstone here. Either pitching, pitching the island. Probably send back the psych rift in this hand, and then okay. um, what was the card before psych rift? Uh, copy artifact. Copy artifact. Artificer's intuition. Yeah, probably I'd keep this. Um. I would pitch the island to okay. the, the gemstone. So I lead, I'd turn turn one, I'd have gemstone, see what we draw. Okay. Play the meticulous archive to surveil, get the soul ring out there, um, and go from there. Okay. Alternative I could pitch the archive and have the instead of the island and have the turn one Tameshi. Um could potentially be a better play. Um so archive is a little bit of a greedier yeah. play because it doesn't get to mesh and play turn one. Right. It sees an additional card instead. So yeah, especially um, with it being a uh, one, uh, one player playing white that could turn one Dranith or turn two Dranith, maybe getting out to mesh. may be a better move. So yeah, it, it could, it could very well be. Yeah. Maybe. Um, that, uh, the other thing is, is having two white sources is maybe, uh, desirable for, for multiple Tameshi activations. Ah, that's very true. So you can kind of kind of go either way okay. there. Yeah, and if we check out the draw for the turn as well, we are top decking a Tezzeret the Seeker. So it, it, at this point, we're just waiting to draw one more land and we can get that Tezzeret down as soon as what? Turn three if we could want even, to? Could, well, it could even be turn two if you, you have the Soul Ring. Right, um, exactly. Yeah. So, so if we play, so let's see, what it, if you play that surveil land, you see a mana source on top. Uh, surveil the surveil land will get us a shows us a fluster storm on top. So that I mean, the, it's probably a pod that I want the fluster storm. So I probably don't. I probably keep that there okay. off of the surveil. Um, but I could also potentially get greedy and um. You know, mill it, see if we can draw a land for that turn two Tez. Okay. All right. I like that. Okay. Let's check in one more test hand. One more test hand, brother. This game we are going. If I can just let's see what, what turn you're going. You are going first this time. Oh yeah. Your opponents this time are a little slower. We have T and K going fourth. Going third is Let's say Atali's going third, but second is going uh, Elevir. And we are first. Okay. All right. First seven is. I think this is something. It's an ancient tomb, gemstone caverns, Mox Diamond, Soul Ring, Seagate Restoration, Force Negation, and Phyrexian Metamorph. Yeah, I think. I think that's probably something we can keep. Um, especially, especially in this pod where there's all the command zones have value in them yeah um so i i look at that to me, that uh Phyrexian metamorph and i see okay this is italian this is a crom is a timna you know whichever 
whichever seems like the best option. Exactly. Um, I can pitch that gemstone to the Mox Diamond, mm -hmm. uh, have turn one Tomb, Diamond, Soul Ring, Tameshi. Mm -hmm. Um, did you, I think you said Force of Negation. Force of Negation, and we have a Seagate Restoration to pitch to it if we want to hold that yeah, up for turns exactly. for one interaction. I can pitch, I can pitch that uh, too, so I can. So yeah, that's. I think that's. It's a safe hand. Uh, it's not like, you know, it's not looking like it can combo um, mm. relatively soon. Right. It's a pretty safe hand, but it's a. It's the type of pod that you can also afford to be safe with that. Um, and it's in a really good position to capitalize on any good top decks that it has, hmm? especially if you're going to be playing the Metamorph and copying Italian. Hundred percent. Yeah. It, if there's anything I've learned playing against Italian is you can count on the Italian player to play Italian. Exactly. Early. That's. that's <laughs> they will they get it down do turn it. one or two consistently. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Maybe two consistently. <laughs> <laughs> hey, if we check the draw for somebody, turn, somebody our, oh, this is we have end up top decking the chrome box. So I don't. It, it kind of sucks because we would either have to, if we want to use it, we could put it, uh, put the Seagate or Force Negation under. But I like keeping the Force Negation and the Phyrexian Metamorph as playable cards. So we may just end up holding that one off till we see yeah, something. Yeah, that's that's something that I would I would probably do there. I I would wait to see if I've draw some some more expendable. Yeah. uh cards and and just you know maybe later later in the game and i'm in a spot where i need an additional mana mm -hmm. um that can that can help me get over the get over the hump 100 percent. well with that said dj man i want to say i appreciate you and honor you thank you so much for this amazing deck tech we went really deep and i am so happy because now i am not wondering why this commander's performing as well it's literally i can understand why it takes over the meta it's complex but it really rewards knowing your deck and your 99 especially well brother and i just wanted to say thank you for coming on we're about to get you into some gameplay so we can see it in the wild but before anything else i just want to say thank you again brother you have anything else yeah. you want to say to the audience no, I think we uh, I think we covered covered the deck very in depth. Good, good. All right. Well, with that said, I want to say thank you all so much for being an amazing, amazing audience. If you're looking for ways to support the channel, it's just as simple as just saying like and subscribe, whether you're either on YouTube or on Twitch. Also, if you want to look for more deeper ways to support the channel, we have first our Patreon gives you deeper access to our open Discord community, as well as gives you options to have your deck viewed on the channel, as well as ask me questions about my personal life and also about Magic the Gathering. And very lastly, if you're saying, T, I don't want to join a Patreon, but I don't want to say one time for the fun time, I want to support you then just buy me a coffee. It keeps me up and keeps the lights on. With that said, y'all be amazing and y'all check out the gameplay coming up soon. Peace.